If you see a snake coil its body into an S shape like this, it might already be too late for you. See what I mean? From this position, a snake can lunge 15 centimeters forward in just 70 milliseconds. That means its venomous fangs could be digging into your flesh in the blink of an eye. Now, the best way to survive a toxic bite from one of these slithery serpents is to get some anti-venom into your system as quickly as possible. But here's the problem. The world is quietly running out of anti-venom because no one's making it anymore. So how are we supposed to treat the over 5 million snake bites that happen every year? We'll dive into that a little later because anti-venom isn't the only way to protect yourself. To help me explain, I'm going to show you three of the deadliest snake attacks on Earth. And as you'll see in this first video, sometimes the secret to survival is in your pants. You're camping and it's dusk. As you gather firewood, one of the sticks moves. It's not a stick, it's a deadly black mamba. The snake raises its head more than one meter off the ground. It strikes like lightning, attacking you again and again, then slithers away. What could you do to survive? Found throughout eastern and southern regions of Africa, the black mamba snake is one of the most feared, most deadly snakes in the world. And it may try to intimidate you by extending its neck flaps. At full speed, a black mamba can travel at 19 kilometers per hour. That's faster than most people can run. They're also the longest venomous snake in Africa and the second longest in the world, averaging 2.4 meters long but they have grown up to 4.3 meters. If you want to survive your trip to Africa, you might be wondering about a few things. Do these snakes hang out alone or travel in groups? And how fast can you die from a black mamba's venom? In 2017, a black mamba knotted itself around a Kenya woman's leg. As she tried to get it off, it bit her three times. She passed out before arriving at the nearest hospital. It was 45 minutes away. Luckily, the medical staff had anti-venom, and it saved her life. But what could you do to increase your chance of surviving a black mamba attack? Step 1. Dress for success. Just two drops of black mamba venom could kill you in a little as 20 minutes. If you'll be walking through bush or long grass, a black mamba snake could be there too. Wearing thick long clothes such as pants, a shirt, and a jacket could help protect you. Wearing hiking or work boots would help protect your feet and ankles. Step 2. Practice social distancing. Black mambas are territorial, so don't go looking for a fight. If you see or hear one, leave it alone. Do not go near the snake. And if it tries to escape, let it. If it feels cornered, you'll face its wrath. And if you see one that looks dead, leave it alone too. Some snakes play dead to lure their prey. Step 3. Know their hiding places. These fearsome killers are surprisingly shy. They like places where they can hide, rest, and not be disturbed. This includes lazing under rocks, inside dead tree stumps, and under logs. They also like caves and empty termite mounds. But they hunt during the day, so watch out. Step 4. Don't be fooled by their name. The inside of their mouths are blue-black, but the black mamba's body is a brownish color ranging from olive to grayish tones, with paler bellies. Step 5. Control your breath. You were so busy watching for one snake that you didn't see the others. Although they're usually loners, you might encounter two or a small group of black mambas. This is hard, but if it bites you, staying calm can help you stay alive. You'll want your breathing and heart rate to be as slow as possible to slow the venom spread through your body. If a black mamba bites someone else, help keep their breathing stable as well. Remove any clothing, rings, necklaces, and any other objects that could constrict their breathing. Step 6. Get Anti-Venom Within 20 minutes, toxins start acting on the nervous and cardiovascular systems. You might pass out or become paralyzed. And without anti-venom, you're guaranteed to die. Scientists have developed an anti-venom that counteracts the 10 most venomous snakes in Africa. It has to be injected in your veins because muscles don't absorb it well. It's important not to inject it into or around the bite site, and you may need equipment to help you breathe while the anti-venom takes effect. Phew, you're lucky. Friends got you to a hospital and they had the anti-venom. And over time, 
the anti-venom will ease your muscle paralysis. You're going to live. Wow, so if scientists have developed such a great anti-venom, then our problem should be solved, right? Well, not exactly. You see, our problem isn't that we don't know how to make anti-venoms. It's much more complicated than that. Making anti-venom is pricey and a tricky process, from milking snake venom to creating antibodies. And the market for these life-saving treatments doesn't bring in big bucks, so drug companies aren't rushing to invest in it. Add to that the short shelf life of these products and the need for refrigeration, and you got a distribution puzzle too. But there's hope on the horizon. There's one country who's figured out a way to produce anti-venom without needing snakes at all. But if you want to know how they do it, you got to make it through our next snake first. This guy's venom can rot your flesh and make you bleed out, so good luck. At first, it's an unsettling noise. The grinding of scales rubbing together. That's the sound of the saw-scaled viper, the world's deadliest snake. And it could be the last sound you ever hear. Found in populated areas throughout India, Sri Lanka, and the Middle East, saw-scaled vipers are responsible for more human deaths than all other snake species combined. While they may not have the deadliest venom, they are extremely aggressive. They strike fast, and they don't stop after one bite. The venom can deteriorate blood vessel membranes, overwhelming the body's blood clotting system. One nip can bleed you dry. The venom can also rot flesh. It practically destroys the tissue around the bite. Gross. Making it through the initial encounter is one thing, but you could be faced with losing a couple of toes, maybe even a leg. When threatened, it will rub its scales together. Called stridulation, this produces the telltale sawing sound that gives this species its name. That may be your only warning before you feel fangs in your flesh. So listen up. How can you avoid these sinister snakes? What should you do if you come face to face with one? And why shouldn't you try to fight back? Step 1. Know your enemy. The first step in avoiding death or serious harm from a saw-scaled viper is to know how to avoid them. The species has a distinct appearance, notably their pear-shaped heads, large elliptical eyes, and distinctive coloring. Their scales are oriented upward rather than backward, which is what you'll usually see with most snakes. They are relatively small, with a maximum length of 40 centimeters. That makes them easy to miss. These snakes are most active on humid nights or after it rains, so that's when you need to be extra careful. Step 2. Wear protection. An overwhelming majority of the snake's bites involve the lower extremities. If you know one might be around, wear closed-toed shoes. Saw-scaled vipers often live in small holes in rocky environments, something a teenager in India learned the hard way. He received severe bites on his hand while reaching into such a hole while hunting bush rats. The resulting swelling led to his hand being transformed into a reddish heap of flesh that later required two fingers to be amputated. So carry some gloves and make sure they're thick. Step 3. Make a quick exit. Because of their overly aggressive instincts, if you encounter a saw-scaled viper, the best thing to do is to get the heck out of there. Just because it's not moving doesn't mean there's no danger. It has the ability to launch a leaping attack from a coiled position. And being a sidewinder, it's extremely fast over surfaces like sand. Back away slowly and do not make sudden movements. Don't take your eyes off it. If you are bitten, get away from the snake immediately. They will often go in for multiple bites, and each one increases your chances of a very bad outcome. Don't try to kill the snake. It's not worth it. Step 4. Beat the clock. Direct contact means the clock is ticking. Prepare for swelling and intense pain around the bite that will spread to the rest of your body. Internal bleeding will become a major issue. Get yourself to a doctor and get an anti-venom treatment. There are literally thousands of anti-venoms available, so make sure you describe the snake accurately as possible. Some victims have even killed their attacker and brought it with them. Please, don't do this. 
Once treated, you should recover in a few days. Step 5. Trust the research. If you survived a saw-scaled viper's venom, there's still a risk of tissue damage or the loss of a limb. But is there any way to prevent this? After a bite, our immune system dispatches white blood cells to the site to fight off the venom. While these cells effectively kill the venom, they also starve the surrounding tissue of oxygen, leading to rot. Researchers have begun experimenting with chemical compounds from much deadlier cobra venom. They have had success neutralizing venom and treating tissue damage simultaneously. Unfortunately, the trials have only been successful on mice. Okay, while they continue to experiment with mice, let's go visit the Netherlands where scientists are using stem cells to create synthetic snake venom. This is super exciting for a bunch of reasons. First, it's way kinder to the animals, and once the cells are set up, we can make a ton of antivenom that might even be cheaper and last longer without needing a fridge. This could be a game changer, especially for places where snake bites are a big problem, but antivenom is hard to come by. Now, antivenom's not gonna help you against our last snake of the day because he's not worried about poisoning you, he just wants to squeeze you to death. Hearing someone scream snake can cause people to panic. And when you're in the shallow, murky rivers of South America, home to the deadly anaconda, you realize this is not a garden snake coming towards you. It's a green anaconda. These are not small snakes. It's often said that green anacondas can grow up to 9 meters in length, and they can weigh as much as 225 kilograms. Anaconda's prey ranges from 10% of their body weight all the way up to 146%. So humans are fair game. What should you do if you are attacked by this deadly beast? Why is it important to hold your breath? What should you do if you get bit? And how could your teeth become your best defensive weapon? It only takes seconds for an anaconda to wrap around its prey and squeeze it to death. And no matter how strong you are, the snake can create up to 62,053 kilopascal of pressure. Anacondas have a legendary status as man-eaters. So if you're going into anaconda territory, here's some tips to help you survive. Step 1. Push your hand inside the snake's mouth. If an anaconda is nearby, watch its face. An anaconda shows its predatory behavior by flicking its tongue. And if it bites you, do not yank yourself away or try to forcefully pull yourself out of its mouth. An anaconda's inner teeth curve backwards to hold onto its prey. So if you try to pull out of the snake's mouth right away, it can cause serious injuries. Getting out in this situation will be much easier if you have someone else to help you. Ask them to slowly open the anaconda's mouth as they do that, push your hand, or whatever body part is being bitten, further inside the snake's mouth. This will get it off the snake's fangs. Then you can get out of the snake's mouth without causing even more injuries. Step 2. Wear proper gear. You might feel safer if you wear clothing that's harder for these snakes to bite through. This includes thick gloves, sturdy shoes, and thick clothing. But what if you set out to become snake bait? Paul Rosalie, a naturalist, agreed to be swallowed whole by an anaconda for a TV special. They thought the snake might regurgitate him, and if necessary, they could cut him free. He wore a special carbon fiber suit designed to withstand the snake's fangs, constriction powers, and digestion so he would survive the ordeal. The suit was doused in pig blood to make it more appealing, but when Paul approached the anaconda, the snake was afraid and tried to escape. So Rosalie provoked the snake. It eventually attacked, swallowed him head first, and began squeezing. He was inside the snake for an hour. Then Rosalie was worried that the anaconda was going to break his arm. He cried out in fear and pain and asked the crew to rescue him. They did. Step 3. Hold your breath. If an anaconda grips the middle of your body, do not exhale. It's like a signal to the snake. Every time you exhale, the snake will squeeze tighter. 
that could prevent you from getting your breath back. Step 4. Stay away from the water. Anacondas like shallow, murky rivers, so stay on land or get yourself to land as fast as possible when anacondas are around. They're great swimmers, but they're not fast slitherers on land. Run towards land and keep running until you get as far away as possible. Step 5. Bite the snake. You couldn't get away fast enough. An anaconda put the bite on you and it has no intention of letting you go. Remember, its weakest spots are its tail and its eyes. Go on the offense, open wide, and bite the snake's tail as hard as you can. It will cause the anaconda tremendous pain and hopefully the snake will let go. Use your fingers as aggressively as you can and poke its eyes. Eyes are a crucial organ that these huge snakes will try to preserve. The truth is, a human is not an anaconda's ideal prey. Its average meal weighs around 18 kilograms. Hey, you like my How to Survive shirt? Well, you can get one of your own. Of course we have a merch store, you didn't know? Check it out at shop.underknown.com. You can get this shirt, or maybe you'd prefer our How to Survive Snake Island hoodie. Yeah, I thought so. Hoodies, hats, tees, mugs, stickers, books. We got it all at shop.underknown.com. Pick up something for that special someone in your life. Okay, that's it for today's How to Survive Marathon of the Deadliest Snake Attacks. Hope you retain some of this knowledge you learned today. Most importantly, get yourself to a doctor after getting bitten by any one of these venomous snakes. That's How to Survive. <laughs>